that is interventions on the bowel that uh, will define what we call nowadays metabolic endoscopy. I will guide you through the interventions that we have, but I can briefly tell you that we can uh, uh, modify the transit of the food by putting a sleeve, PTFE sleeve, so we can detour the food from the stomach into the proximal bowel, or even from the esophagus into the proximal bowel. And also we can modify uh, uh, the most inner layer uh, of the bowel, the mucosa, with some technology I'm about to show you. And even like uh, many of the so-called metabolic surgery, we can provide a definitive detour by creating a magnetic anastomosis. So let's go to that. Uh, the theories on diabetes in the gut, uh, you know, they start uh, around uh, around IRCAD uh, at the time that Dr. Rubino worked uh, down there in, in Strasbourg. And he created this theory of the, the foregut. That means that something in the proximal bowel uh, is deal with the diabetes. When, and when you bypass the proximal bowel, as you can see here, with uh, putting uh, intact sleeve in the Gotu Kakazaki rats that modified uh, type 2 diabetic rats. And then you see the, the other picture that is a fenestrated uh, sleeve and allowing the food to get in contact uh, with the bowel. And you go to the graph, you're going to see here that the ones that, uh, that put the intact sleeve, that is the, the lower curve, is a non-diabetic response. And if you do the sham, meaning you do nothing, or you do the fenestrated sleeve, you have a, a diabetic response. So these kind of experiments that's very smart, uh, they define, and you see here it's from 2010, they define that the bowl really has something to do uh, with diabetes, not the, just the for good, but the hind good theory. So I'll start with this uh, proximal theory talking about the possibility of having a duodenal bypass with a GI sleeve. And this uh, will show to you how we do it. So we do an endoscopy, then we put a guide wire. Over this guide wire, we're going to slide a capsule. Inside the capsule, like a parachute, we have a 60 centimeters, two foot sleeve made of uh, PTFE. You have this ball, the inner catheter, so you're negotiating your passage into the, the bowel. Then when you reach uh, your target, uh, you stand in this, the full sleeve, you let go the ball, and then you rearrange the capsule into a post pyloric uh, position. You will open up a stand that is inside. The stands have 20 barbs, 10 proximal, 10 distal, so you're going to fix that in place. So after that, you remove the sink, fish, and go home. How it's supposed to work? So you see the food is passing in yellow and the biliopancreatic juice passing in green. So they go aside and they're gonna mix like a, like a, 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 a biliary limb of a gastric bypass. How to remove, you have a customized cap, customized grasper. So you grab it, collapse it, and then remove. It's supposed to be for one year into the body. So how it really works, uh, is a, is a matter of discussion yet, but we have some of the theories that I, I previously discussed. And this graph show the results. So this is a four quadrants graph. So if we go to the inferior left, you're gonna see a lot of dots. There are patients treated with the uh, this endless sleeve. You're gonna see that in that inferior left, they lose weight effectively and the H1C, the glycated hemoglobin goes lower. If you go to the upper left quadrant is just patients that lost weight. If you go to the right upper quadrant, have uh, no effect. And the inferior right quadrant, you see patients that just uh, lost weight. Uh, so you see here that the ones who benefits, they goes and they lose weight and the H1C, they drops. If you go in terms of weight loss, just weight loss, you see here that the longer studies that we have done in Brazil and Chile, uh, they surpass 15% of total weight loss. So it's a very interesting uh, result on that. Uh, we have been studied that this for- fistula is identified once again by the gastroscopist in a gastric fold. Sorry, uh, I think that is some, yeah, so we got back. So this uh, paper on the screen, is done by ASGE and this is called the PV study. This PV study is very interesting. So when they evaluate uh, gastrointestinal devices, so in this specific one, uh, the goal is to reach at least 5% of total weight loss 
uh, no more than 5% of comp uh, severe complications and at least uh, one point drop on H1C. So let's see how it goes. So those in the screen, they are papers, no randomized, and you see here different uh, three months, six months, and one year, but just uh, guide yourself by the red loose angle. And this is the meta-analysis of those. So if you go down uh, and down, you have some numbers. So if you go to the right is zero plus 1.5 plus three. So it means that uh, the H1C get worse. If you go to the left, it means that it drops the H1C. And you can see here that those angle that, that sits under 1.5 drop of H1C. So it uh, fulfills the task. And also those three randomized control trials, uh, again, go and guide yourself by the Lausanne, which sits again over the 1.5. So it's effective on, uh, on dropping the, the H1C. Also, and that is the train so that- You can see here the leaves. The leak is uh, quite uh, on the- uh, Okay. Uh, see endoscopic in X-ray, please. Sorry, uh, so I'll, I'll go, go ahead. So this on the screen uh, is a study very well designed and done by the NIH in uh, UK and how it was done. So it used the device uh, plus liragotide that is GLP-1 analog, device alone and just the drug itself alone. So in blue, we have both combined and you can see here that the weight loss on the left and the H1C uh, on the right was really magnified when you combine the device and the new drug, and we'll compare with device alone and drug alone. So in, uh, in, in summary, how it works, it drops H1C by 1.5. Uh, more than 50% of the patients reach the therapeutic goal if compared with medicine is very good. That is a, a number rate of 13% of uh, total weight loss, and it uh, improves the cardiovascular uh, risks, uh, risks of the patient. That said, it, uh, it went for many trials in South America, in Europe. They got in the way they were clinically used in South America and in Europe, and they went to US to do the FGA trial. And uh, this trial was suspended and stopped for a reason that uh, uh, we really don't know why, but the hepatic abscess, as you can see on the bottom of the screen, that was no more than 1% all over the world. When it got to the US for a specific trial, there was much more and 3.5%, so the study was suspended. And even if the study was suspended, let me get to the now of familiar graph again, the four quadrants. And you see here, the inferior left quadrant, meaning the patients that lost weight and effectively dropped the H1C, you see blue dots and red dots. Red dots were the sham procedure, the control group, and the blue dots was the intervention group. So you can see they concentrate here. And even with just a third, of this trial finish, uh, they could prove super superiority. Fortunately, they get back to US, they modify the protocol, and now they got a second chance. And uh, as we speak, uh, there is a, a big trial in US now, uh, again, a uh, prospective randomized trial to see if it can go and see the light of the clinical use. So this is all the, 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 the literature this device had covered. Also, uh, to let you know, there is a lot of research in the world with those leaves. This one is uh, an American company, but done in India, uh, and they have no barbs. And the very, uh, uh, I'm going to show you very briefly how it works. So it's the same uh, extension of the sleeve, and then they're going to let in, in place uh, the, a double stand device, but with no barbs, because those barbs seem to have something to do with that. They have problems with distal migration, and they are solving that with endoscopic suturing. Uh, so it's a very, uh, on the beginning. And when you compare <coughs> both, the main difference is the absence of the barbs, and they have a very initial result uh, showing a similar results of the, the previous one, but that's a long way there to go. Also, we have this one. You see here, they detour the, the food from the distal esophagus into the proximal bowel. This company has in and out, but they have uh, published one, at least one paper. Uh, we don't know uh, how it's going really well or not, but this was this single paper, 12 patients. Uh, they could deliver, uh, 13 patients could deliver 12. Single center, one year trial for two hour procedures uh, compared with this 30 minutes of the previous one. 70% have early removal. 10 patients we follow for one year and just only get to 35% 
of total of excess weight loss, not total weight loss. So, and, and the patients, when they were removing the 10 patients, uh, only six had the device function. On the ones who are functioning, they have a better weight loss. So this is uh, patients, individuals. So we have to, to wait to see if this technology can go or not. The problem is that the attachment of these to the esophagus, this seems like cumbersome and sometimes complicated. So this one again uh, is uh, uh, one trying to detour from New York from the esophagus into the boil. There in the very beginning, this is Mark Bessler from uh, Columbia University, and this is showing the device and they are trying to, to get into the market that they are doing animal studies. The next one is the thermal duodenal mucosal resurfacing. So the thermal ablation of the mucosa. And the theory behind that is the mucosa of the duodenal is part of the problem of the diabetes. And if you ablate that, the new mucosa, a non-diabetic mucosa will arise from that. So they start in the rats. Again, the, the old, uh, uh, old friend of us, that go to Kakazak, the diabetic rats. So they mechanically ablate the mucosa on the rats. And you see here the graph is, is on, the, on the inferior left. You see here the ones who are ablated have a non-diabetic response and the sham on the other groups have a diabetic response. So it means that it could work. So then we went to uh, a larger animal uh, model. And you can see here below the mucosa. And on the A, uh, you have the normal mucosa, D3 after ablation, D4, D28 after ablation, and D42, you see that the mucosa is a little, uh, uh, not as organized in the beginning, but the mucosa is back and you didn't damage and you see the, the muscular layer. Then we went to the cadavers, first in human, as was published in the video GIE. This is the procedure. So the idea is to do an endoscopy, uh, identify the papilla, tattoo the other side or put a clip to see where it is. Then we go, uh, we go directly into the tri-triangle guide wire. Then we slide this uh, special balloon. It will touch in the mucosa in three points and in three spots. Then uh, I'm gonna aspirate the mucosa, get a needle and inject 10 cc of, of uh, methylene blue saline solution. And you see a 360 lifts. So we're gonna lift this large half centimeters, lift again, then apply circulating hot water, 87.2 degrees for 10 seconds. So two lifts, one ablation, two lifts, one ablation. So the idea is to go up to the triangle around 10 centimeters of ablation. And after that, you remove, you check, you're gonna see here the, the, the naturation of the protein, so it alters the color, so meaning that you have some action. And the patients, uh, they will go home uh, two weeks of diabetic uh, liquid diet, and they resume the, the diabetic uh, diet. So see here in images, so see uh, from left to right, uh, pre, then you have the lifting mucosa in blue, then you have just pause ablation, and, and uh, on the follow-up, you see the mucosa is get back. So to, just to get you up to speed, a very, very brief video. So this is the setup in Brazil, in our university, at the uh, AABC University. The device is inside the lumen. And then you lift the device and you're not gonna see anything because you need to aspirate over that to have a side seal. So just look after the mucosa, just after the burn looks very, uh, I can tell you, uh, burn it. But uh, when we go to one year follow up, you see the mucosa is pretty much beautiful with no scars on that. And uh, this is the, the development. We start with uh, more than one hour per sheet, hour and a half, now it's 45 minutes, it's in the right. Uh, those are biopsies uh, done one month and three months random on the area, on the target area. And you see here that the, you have complete villus formation, no acute inflammation, no chronic inflammation. Just go to the right and you see, uh, I'll give you a moment to check that we are just really uh, burning the mucosa. So the mucosa is back again. So complications, uh, this is what the most common on the beginning, that is stenosis on D2, D3. And it was because uh, uh, not a technical error, but the development of the device. And after the first, second generation, you didn't have that much. But you see here that even those was uh, easily solved with uh, endoscopic dilation. So we uh, and then published the first series in diabetes care. Then the second series international uh, with Europe uh, was published in the gut. And this is the results. So on the left, what you see is H1C again. And you see a drop on H1C at 24 weeks that is sustainable. Uh, after uh, uh, after one year uh, on that. 
So again, you see this four graph, uh, you see, uh, I'll guide you through the superior right one is the weight. So it's a very minimal weight loss. And uh, look uh, on the inferior right that the drop on LAT, so the hepatic enzymes, they go a dramatic uh, drop that is confirmed with MRI and uh, fiber scan, you see more blue on the right, less fat. So look at the impressive results we have on that. So not just that the, the diabetes, but the fatty liver disease get better. So, and I'll show you now uh, the top line results of a prospective randomized big study uh, in between Europe and uh, in Brazil. And you can see here on the left, the DMR, that's it, the, the intervention and the sham group, uh, significant difference. And if you go to the right, the responders will have an even more dramatic action on that. So this study is now uh, on FGA evaluation and a prospective randomized sham controller trial. Uh, as we speak, they are, they are doing that. They stopped for the pandemic. So let's see next year, the big results on that. So this is how what we cover. Again, like the other one, the sleeve, there's a lot of uh, research on that because it's like raised a lot of interest on the on the field. So like they're using the laser to do the ablation. They have a very small result company from Israel, six patients and they have drop of one point on H1C. Uh, we don't know much more about that, how they do or not. They just present this very small abstract on the Diabetes Intervention uh, Congress in New York. And you can see here, sometimes uh, I get a bit of a little bit nervous uh, with sleeve and uh, or lasers, and uh, maybe we can have a, it's a for sure is a joke, but we have to see how they're gonna use the lasers. They have to show us so nothing to cover from literature. And uh, this very interesting one is the idea to use vapor to ablate uh, ectopic uh, and metaplastic tissue. In this kind, in this case here is for the Barrett's, but the, I know this company is trying to do that uh, on Duodeno also. So they put a very small catheter, they uh, isolate the area with balloons, they apply the vapor, and the vapor is supposed to be precise enough to just ablate the mucosa. Also, they are trying electromagnetic, not electromagnetic pulse, but uh, high frequency uh, electricity also from Mayo Clinic, you have to know. And this is the last one. This is endoscopic jejunal ileal bypass. So who will guess that we were able to do magnetic anastomosis by endoscopy? So let me guide you to, this is not new. So it's 2009, in 2009, both were published. And you see uh, what on the left is was in an animal trial and on the right is on a human uh, subject. So that's not new, uh, uh, but now the magnets, they are very sophisticated. They can pass through the scope, as you can see here, this is what we use and we pass through the scope and form an octagon. So the idea, is uh, to do a colonoscopy, intubate the ileum, the ileum for 70 centimeters, as you're seeing here on the screen right now. Then doing an endoscopy and go after the trite angle for at least 50 centimeters and identify what we call the drop zone. So we transilluminate each other to check if we are in the right position. Also, we do x-ray to identify the drop zone. So once you're there, and you can check here by x-ray, we will deliver the magnets from the uh, upper part and from the bottom. Those magnets, they have three sutures and outside we have like a joysticks that we are aligning both until the magnetic force will put them together. Once it's done, so we cut the threads and we leave that in place. Uh, and uh, around, you see here the magnetic image and how they are coupled uh, nicely. So cut the threads and let it in place, let in place, patient go home. Seven days, around seven days, you compress and you form uh, a passage and there'll be a lateral, lateral uh, passage detour. Uh, and quite some of the metabolic surgical procedures nowadays use the same approach, uh, but surgically. So you see here, it's completely different from the left to the right and the inferior. It's a side to side, not a terminal terminal, not terminal lateral that was done in the past. It cannot be done right nowadays. So we're doing a different one. So just one paper was published on that. It was in Czech Republic. You can see here by Dr. Evelyn Machika. Uh, and this is the, the preliminary result of 12 months. Now they follow the patient for three months, for three years, sorry, uh, 10 patients. And you see a drop here in light yellow 
diabetics in light blue, the pre-diabetics, notice the glycemia is very well controlled. And the, the, and the weight dropped as well. So just follow the light yellow, you're gonna see at the end on the right, uh, almost 15% at 12 months drop on uh, total weight, percentage of total weight. Those patients were followed for three years and the diabetes, uh, the H1C drops 1.8 and uh, the weight loss of uh, around 18% uh, of percent of total weight loss. And at the, the end of the three years, one of these patients developed an internal area that seems to be the Achilles tendon of this technique. So just me show you here on the left, you see the magnet getting out of the, the lumen. On the right, uh, for safety, those this trial need to have a, a, a laparoscope inside. You see here that magnets, when they attach it, they are very firm. Uh, on, on getting on that. On this next screen, what you see here on the left is three lumens. So it's the anastomosis check it after three months. And you know what? This is very interesting because it can even point where the anastomosis is. It's very rounded, perfect, beautiful anastomosis. And you go to the right to see the, the side to side uh, deviation. So that if you compare with this uh, surgical study done by laparoscopy and done in, in, in Greece, you see here they find six patients and they have a, a good drop on uh, H1C and the weight, but look at that. So uh, they lose weight uh, and after some time they start regaining, uh, regaining weight, but it's not what you see in terms of uh, H1C, their continued drop. And you see, I'll check again. So even if the weight comes back, the H1C stays low. So it's a very uh, good metabolic procedure. And again, the Achilles tendon was uh, one internal hernia after two years of follow-up. So uh, what we, what the status now, we went to Argentina. Now we are doing a prospective randomized uh, sham, control, uh, sham control trial. And uh, we did some cases, but we got to a turning point. The turning point, gentlemen, is you need three to four hours to do the procedure. You need for of the most experienced endoscopies in the world to do that. So it works, uh, but it's hard to get to that. So we get back to the lab and it's happened when, when we're doing those kinds of science. And uh, the decision was made on doing and changing that for uh, laparoendoscopic. So you do a laparoscopy, identify 250 to 300 centimeters of second valve, put near to the duodenum when the expectations of internal hernia is less. So we go by endoscopy, deliver a magnet. Then by laparoscopy, the surgeon go to a small, tiny hole and it pass the catheter and deliver a magnet inside. Then they will adjust this perforation into the middle of the magnet. So no need to, for the stitches should be done. Then they will put it together easily because you will see that. So they will couple much more easier. So it's a procedure of uh, 40 minutes, one hour. Then the magnets are left in place and they'll follow the same path of the dejunum ileum, the duodenum ileum. So just check the first cases, humans, you can see here the magnet on the duodenum. Now the coupling of the magnets you can see on the x-ray and you can see here. So they did five patients. They are doing very well in terms of uh, weight loss and uh, H1C control. We have to check what's gonna happen in, in the future there. So this is what we have covered with these devices they to right now. So again, here, we are now in the randomized trial by this. So let's to put you, uh, uh, the three together, and you can see here, the first two are under FGA study and uh, the, the, the magnets are on its infancy. So you can see here, uh, the dodenogational uh, bypass with sleeve, more than 4,000 patients since 2005, the DMR, 500 patients since 2014, both under evaluation on H1C sorry, on FGA, on that. So what see in the future is uh, you, what you saw Silvana did yesterday, this beautiful procedure of endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty. We think that on the near future, we're gonna be able to get intervention in the stomach and put it together with interventions on the board because it's what bariatric surgery do. Also, we can even add uh, drugs to that and you have, uh, we're gonna go in terms of more efficacy, keeping the minimally invasive way and the safety of those procedures. So to, to, know, to, to show you that, a new project that we are working on that is a sleep balloon. 
So we're going to put the balloon on the stomach, they have a hole in the middle, and then we're going to stand the sleeve for one meter, and we're going to have an intervention on the stomach, intervention on the boil. We still got uh, on the animals, we just, uh, the company just uh, provide us with animal data showing that it works in, in metabolic rats. So uh, you're going to see here too, after one year, we're going to puncture, empty, and remove them reversible. And uh, also in the future, I follow the steps of uh, IRCAD and Silvana and the robotic, uh, and the luminal robotic might allow us, as you can see here, as we are in the development, but they're very sophisticated uh, robot uh, from US that's now in Brazil. And we are starting to do in the first human, this is our university in Brazil. And uh, this is, uh, we are developing and before the pandemic, and we, we think we will resume with human cases as soon as the pandemic get better on my country. So again, just to show you what it can be done in terms of door, what is the cadaver that we have done in, uh, in Houston. But you see here, uh, it's, it's for sure, it's not on that speed. It takes a lot of time now. We are on the learning curve, but you can see here full thickness resection uh, on the cadaver on the rectum. And uh, more than that, the suture uh, will be very easy. And uh, we know their ear cut is pursuing this path and they are very, very uh, much advanced than us uh, on that. So this is, and we can do the metabolic procedures uh, with that in the future for sure. So this is what I have to show to you. I thank you very much for your patience and uh, I'm here for any questions that, that you have. Thank you. Thank you, Manuel. Thank you very, very much. Beautiful presentation as, uh, as usual. <coughs> very wide uh, uh, portfolio of choices. Um, the, the floor now is open for a question. You can either interact by the Q&A option or you can raise your hand and we're going to give you uh, the, the floor. We already had a question that was posted while you were talking, Manuel, and uh, it's something that uh, uh, actually is asked very often when discussing about the endo barrier or the sleeve device in the duodenum, uh, does it increase the risk of pancreatectomy? Uh, do you get, or have you seen or heard um, uh, in the literature uh, about uh, um, occlusion of bile or pancreatic juices with this uh, sleeve, duodenal sleeve device? Sure, Savannah. Uh, this is uh, the, the first question that, that we have to ask. Uh, and the idea is that come to our mind is that the, the opening of the sleeve will block uh, the flow of bio and pancreatic juice, and it will not because it's very, very, very soft and it's made of Teflon, so they get they, they get stuck. So from these almost five case, uh, five thousand cases uh, done in the world, there was just a single case of pancreatitis that we couldn't prove exactly that it was the origin uh, of, uh, of on the device. And even when the device migrated with those ugly barbs, they see the track over the papilla, we couldn't identify uh, one case. The problem with the device is uh, perforation, dislodgement, bleeding, and in US, the hepatic abscess, possibly for translocation, but uh, definitely not pancreatitis. Thank you, Manuel. Um, actually, while we're waiting for uh, for more questions from the audience, uh, I have a question myself. Of course, you describe a multitude of devices. Um, uh, what are the exact indication for these devices? Which patients you would do this procedure in, and what would be today uh, the device of uh, of your choice? So that's a, that's a very clever question, Silvana. Uh, and I'm not gonna dare to send it back to you pointing to the metabolic surgery that they have uh, at my last count, they have 11 procedures on the pole on that. So it seems that uh, not surgery, not us, we identify what is the, the silver bullet. So if you consider duodenal mucosal resurfacing, uh, that's a procedure that patient not gonna lose weight. So they, the intention is to get into the metabolic and can be redone. And now that, uh, that uh, the, the research discovered this impact on the liver, it will be used more and more uh, in the liver. Uh, the one that I like the most is the older one, and then I know that you like uh, also, is the, is the sleeve. Uh, we have to fix the problem of the, the stent itself, but the patients when we follow, and you have done that beautiful job and pub published that in, in, in Mirkat, patients love to have it. So they drop weight, and they drop H1C. So this is this very interesting. 13% is very interesting. Uh, and uh, 1.5 to 2% drop on H1C, that's beautiful. 
the anastomosis, the magnetic anastomosis, we are doing uh, a definitive modification. So we go a little bit further. So there's no way back on that. And uh, again, they drop weight and, they, they, uh, and the H1C is very well controlled, but we can have, depending on how far we go in the boil, uh, more uh, problems with nutrition. So we have to balance patients in seeing that uh, how, uh, how sick they are, how, how hard is the diabetes uh, to choose, as, as we, we choose uh, the medicine to treat them then. I think that we're gonna need both, uh, uh, all of them, uh, to different type of patients, I think, in the future. Thank you, Manuel. I know that that was a tough question uh, to, uh, to answer. We have a, a question from the audience. A participant would like to ask you something. So you can go ahead, sure. please. I'm Dr. Lane Taj from Pakistan. And uh, Manuel, as usual, you have presented with a wonderful presentations. So my question is that hopefully, on a lighter note, hopefully the central <coughs> barrier will not prove to be a certain barrier for bariatric surgery. My question is that this endoscopic duodenal mucosal resurfacing, resurfacing, can it uh, reduce the weight of the patient also? Uh, sorry, uh, the last part of your question. Que <coughs> that endoscopic duodenal resurfacing procedure can reduce the weight of the patient also. Uh, not, not as, not as we want it. Uh, so it's more a metabolic uh, one. So we think that if you need to lose weight, you cannot have to attach another procedure uh, on that. We can improve the reach of the metabolic uh, effect of these. So we are now uh, on the verge of a new discovery in new uh, research collecting uh, stem cells from the idiom, and you know that the idiom produced the GLP-1. So after doing the, the, the resurfacing, the idea is to inject stem cells into duodenum and let the, the, the new mucosa be very near, uh, very uh, look like the ileum. So the idea is to have an ileal interposition on a cellular level, but uh, we are like five years uh, from that. But for weight loss, this is not the procedure. It's just for, it's more for metabolic conditions. Thank you, thank you. Okay, Silvana, uh, I have uh, two questions. In fact, by Aslam. The first one is, where any of the failed on the barrier interventions related to allergies to the other barrier? Uh, sorry, the, the, last, the last part was, it was breaking. If some failure of the under barrier were related to allergies to the under to the to the device, well, that's Sorry. that's a yeah, Bernard, that's a wonderful question. I have no idea. Okay, next, uh, duodenal resurfacing procedure. Is it your preference to start proximally and then continue distally? Are there concern with perforation? Okay, so you saw that uh, we present around 400 cases done worldwide. That was one perforation that happens uh, happens in Brazil in another center, not ours. Uh, but it's due. To, it was done to the technical user uses of, uh, technical issues with the uh, the one who were performing on that. So it's one in 400, and it was a no device. Now they changed the device and it's much, much better. So in terms of getting proximal and distal to the papilla, uh, with that device, it's not possible, but I know that uh, some researchers in Mayo Clinic using the delivery of just uh, pure electric energy, high frequency, they can do that on the, do, uh, on the boob, skip the papilla, and can go uh, even further than us. So we are limited to the post, uh, post papilla or in between the papilla and the trite angle is, is the space we are limited right now by this technology. But you, I, you saw that I show you uh, more technologies and I think in the future it will get better. And even we can try do that uh, in the ileum or in the other parts of the bowel and uh, ablation therapy. And, uh, and uh, I can give in, even to you, Silvana, that because uh, IRCAD and HIU, EIU, IHU is so advanced and on ablation therapies, and I think that you guys already have something uh, on the on, on the on the horizon to do that. Maybe you cannot tell about the 
tell us about it. <laughs> yes, no, no, no disclosure uh, possible. Thank you, Manuel. And uh, I think uh, because of uh, there is one more question, and then we will move to the next presentation. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so from our side, uh, we have some question relag re on the just wait. Yeah. What procedure do you prefer? So I think that you have answered this question. So yeah. we go through. Um, question from people around. Uh, the uh, long-term follow-up available for the magnetic anastomosis. Yeah, and the, the magnetic, okay, go ahead, please. Yeah, no, 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 go ahead for the long-term follow-up uh, of uh, magnetic anastomosis. Cool. Uh, this is, we, we have, uh, these patients, the small group were easy uh, to be followed, so they were all followed for three years and, and more. And so up to three years, the result was really sustainable. And as I stated before, at the end of the, the third year, one patient had an internal hernia that needs to be revised. Uh, three or four patients have some kind of diarrhea, but they were uh, uh, reversed with uh, diet counseling. And uh, so they, they, were, they were very good. Yes, there was a question regarding short bowel syndrome, potentially needing closure of the anastomosis. Um, and you have a flow, so any single on the bowl that have a flow doesn't doesn't close, and we don't have blind loops on that. And if you if you uh, get back to the bariatric procedure, so you have this sassy and the sagi that is uh, like they uh, they are uh, they are different ways to do uh, the or uh, sorry uh, biliopancreatic uh, bypass. They, some of them use lateral lateral detours on that. So this has already been tested by surgery for us. Okay, and uh, just the last question, <clears throat> the duration of, I uh, know, how long does it last, the duodenal resurfacing effect? So how long do, does it last? So we, uh, we have uh, two trials uh, addressing that. So at least, the, in between one and two years for diabetes and maybe more for hepatic benefits on that. So the idea is that if you can redo that uh, each other year, and if you compare with the cost of insulin in US, uh, so definitely uh, it can be used uh, if we pass the FGA trial uh, at the end. Thank you, Manuel. Uh, uh, so we, we will move uh, to uh, the lecture from Gianfranco Donatelli. I hope that uh, he uh, overcame his technical problems. He has been trying to connect for quite a while. Uh, but uh, if he's ready, I will leave the floor to Gianfranco, who's going to talk about how to deal endoscopically with complication from breath of surgery. Gianfranco. Please. So thanks, thanks, Silvana. Thanks, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Sorry to be late. One moment, I will. I will try to share my presentation. So I'm here to share my experience about uh, bariatric surgery complication endoscopic management. I have nothing to disclose. There is, um, everybody knows what is a leak, what is a fistula. And uh, everybody knows that the leak is extravasation of a medial contrast without a communication with the uh, other organs. And uh, fistula is a, commun is a, is a anomal communication between to repitalize surface. So this is a leak. You can see as yes, medium contrast go out. This is a leak, a whole case of sleeve. This is, this is a leak. You can see a, a leak, extravasation of medium contrast. This is a fistula. This is a fistula, gastrobronchial fistula with the biliary tree. This is fistula. This is a gastrocutaneous fistula. And also here we can see this is sleeve. We, could, we inject some contrast and we, see, we can see the trites is a gastroenteric fistula following the sleeve. And another case, this is fistula, gastrocolic fistula with the left colon, colon uh, angle. So what, this is what we see when we inject some contrast to do, to do the diagnosis of the, of the problem. But by inside, what we, what we see? We see a defect, a, sick, a defect of a step line. We, see, we, we can see this as small defect or maybe a uh, more uh, uh, big uh, defect. Sometimes we can have some necrosis inside. You can see that. Sometimes 
we can go inside all the time i can with the scope pass through the defect to go inside to go out in the peritoneal cavity in the perigastic space i go out to, to clean to you can you can see here the drain inserted by the surgeon so i'm in a perigastic space below the diaphragm i'm i'm trying to if there is some necrosis I can also do necrosectomy, just like in the wall of the Hof necrosis after pancreatitis. I remove all the necrosis. I clean the cavity to have a better healing later. At, and one, one case, one, another more case, you can see here, this is sleeve. There is a defect below the cardia. I go out, you can see here the reinforcement that you know better than me, this is much more for to prevent bleeding and not leak. And at this moment, what we can do? Seal the defect or drain the cavity, this pseudo cavity. You have to know that if we seal the defect, for sure you have to drain, so you are obliged to do a drain, an external drainage, radiological or surgical drainage of the collection, of the perigastic collection. If not, we, there is another, another option, is to drain inside the cavity. And this is what I do. I drain inside the cavity. And I want, why I drain inside the cavity? Because I want, to, I want to show you this particular case. This is a patient with a sleeve. Maybe there is stenosis. I don't know. It's not my, I don't know. We, the, the patient was operated two weeks before. So there is some inflammation. Look there. There was a, there was a drain. But still, these patients have a fever and a PCR at more than 300 with more than 3,000 uh, white uh, blood cell. So, by EUS, I found a collection, a perigastic collection, just like a pseudocyst, just like pseudocyst after pancreatitis. Then I puncture the, the, the pseudocyst. So I did a defect in the stomach to deliver. You can see some picture, I inject some contrast, then I dilate, then I, I deliver the pigtail, and I did a defect on the stomach just to have the in, um, inside the drainage of the pseudo cavity and there was some pus inside. So why not to drain the pseudo cavity if the, if the defect is already open? I start and just to show you, this is one month later, these patients, you can see there is no more extravasation or medium contrast. So if we have this kind of a situation, this is, this is still a sleeve with the defect already open with some pus that is coming out why I am in my experience, and uh, I cannot imagine to seal this defect, but uh, I think that the better is to drain with the pigtail to have inside the drainage, and then the, the defect will be automatically closed. So you can see here the defect, and I insert, I will go fast. I insert the pigtail to have the drainage. And you have to know something that the pigtail is above both eye. First eye is to drain. Second eye, it works like a, a foreign body. So in the pseudo cavity, it favorizes granulation. So this pseudo cavity that is there is there because it is pathologic, because it's a fill of liquid. When the liquid is no more there, the pseudo cavity will be completely healed, will be collapsed on the pigtail. And I will show you some particular case. This is sleeve. You can see here the pseudo cavity with, uh, with some air, gut wire, pigtail. In all patients, you have to know, you can see here nasofilling tube. In all patients, I insert for the first four weeks nasofilling tube. It's not only for a problem, is because the patients cannot eat. If not, there will be some food, some liquid that go through the defect in the cavity. It's not for that. It's for two reasons. First of all, is to, 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 to improve the, the, the income, um, uh, how do you say, calories for the patients. This is the first about the nasofilling tube. But the second stuff, when there are these patients, everybody knows that sometimes there is, there is associated a small stenosis, but, or maybe big stenosis, but sometimes in the first period, the stenosis, just inflammatory stenosis, we cannot put stent because we are in the, in my experience, you can, have, you can have ischemia on the gastric tube. So you cannot dilate because if it's very close to the surgery, you can have some other complications. So I put nasofilling tube, tube also to bypass this potential stenosis. 
you can see here, one month later, these patients, pigtail. Just at the X-ray, you can see here, there is no more hair because everything is collapsed. I remove the pigtail and this is the results with the no more extravasation. This is a, a, case, a particular case. We go out, it's clean. How I told you before, all the times I can, I go, I go out to clean. I'm, I clean just with some saline. I don't use betadine because sometimes the patient had the fever later. So just saline to clean and to such. This is the defect, pigtail. You can see the pigtail. One month later, I remove the pigtail. This is the results. But what is very interesting is endoscopic. Look at the granulation tissue. Before I was out by this defect. I, was, I, I passed through to go out. Do you remember the videos before? So everything is collapsed and healed. And also some case of a fistula. This is a gastro, particular case of gastrobronchial fistula. You can see there, look with the pigtail there. There was a collection under the diaphragm. So you can see here the pigtail with the gastrobronchial fistula and again pigtail there. And three months later, this is the results. You can see the date. Three months later, the patient comes. No more pigtail because they migrated spontaneously. And this is the results. And the patient is still doing well with no more extravasation. You have to know that sometimes, several times, we don't find the pigtail. Do you know why? Because the, 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 the pseudo cavity, when collapsed, push it, the pigtail, in the gastric tube. The pigtail are very soft. And the patients uh, eliminate spontaneously. Why the, the endoscopic internal drainage key points? You have to know something. When we have this kind of a situation, this is a sleeve complicated, we have three kinds of pressure, intra-abdominal pressure, external pressure, atmospheric pressure, because if the patient is drained, and then we have intragastric, intraluminal gastric pressure. And you have to know, you know better than me, that the stomach with, with, the, peristalt with the peristaltism, is, it works like a vacuum system. In the such, the, 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 the liquid that is there to go inside, inside the, in the stomach to be, to be drained. And do you know better than me something? If this kind of liquids have to go out by the drain against the atmospheric pressure in an obese patient, it's very difficult. If it's a very, very high, um, how do you say, cut off, um, uh, difference the pressure. So it's, di it's difficult to have a complete drainage. It's more physiologic to have inside the drainage. It's more short. And for that, that uh, thanks to my maestro, Mercedes Dalmani, it is there. I, I, oh, sorry, I show uh, all the times this picture that Mercedes Dalmani told me. And uh, that uh, in the, for the, this reason, in the mediastin or in the thorax space, never we work pigtail because the pressure are completely different. For that, I say all the time, if we have a leak intra-abdominal with intra-abdominal collection below the diaphragms, I think that pigtail in any type of surgery, pigtail it works very well. But if you have some the same the same problems in the thorax in the mediastinum, it's not it doesn't doesn't it cannot work because because there is a problem of difference pressure. And you can uh, ask me, and uh, what about SEMS? Sometimes I use SEMS. Yes, sometimes I use SEMS. This is a particular, ca a particular case of, uh, of uh, defect. After, during, during sleep with bougie, with bougie in the esophagus, you can say here, you can say here also some air. In this case, in the mediastinum, I cannot, I cannot put pigtail for the reason that you know. So you can see here the sleeve that is okay. In this kind of patients, still I use uh, I use a fully covered SEMS. You can see here, you can see here the extravasation medium contrast. I put a fully covered on the stent to avoid migration because you have to know that the stent, you can see here some hemostatic clip. You have to know that in this guy, in these patients, there is no stenosis. So the, 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 the stent can migrate. I fix it with the normal clip, but I know that in the other center, use the um, over stitch or maybe some other kind of a clip, but uh, I have just that and I use that. And anyway, anyway, I put the nasofilling tube. Anyway, also if in these patients there was no stenosis of the sleeve, and uh, I put that again to have a right income of calories. 
And uh, in my opinion, the nasofilling tube through the stent, the fully covered stent anyway, um, avoid migration. And these patients, one, uh, sorry, these patients, one month later, you can see here, everything is healed without no extravasation of medial contour. You remember, you, do you remember before it was like that? Come back to endoscopic internal drainage. Why endoscopic internal drainage? First of all, again, because there is a, there is a, there are, there is a favor a good pressure inside the GI tract that favorizes the vacuum system, so the 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 drainage inside the the, the, the stomach. Shortness of drainage compared to the external drainage, or maybe radiologic drainage. Second stuff, second stuff, in my opinion, and with my experience, there is that the, 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 the pigtail are, are very, very well tolerated. There are several studies that are now appearing about the pigtail. There is one that appeared in one month ago, so, so hard done, but uh, a Arabic group uh, the, in, uh, that say that uh, is uh, compared and that it is very, is very comfort for the patient to have, uh, to have a pigtail. And everybody knows about the stent. I, in my experience, I deliver a lot of stent, but I remember the patient had come back to the hospital every two days because it was had pain, there was vomiting, the stent was occluded because at the end of the stent, there is all the time an ingrowth tissue that uh, is, um, is occluded the stent. Early management, again, uh, in everybody knows that if you have a complication, a leak, a leak after the sleeve bypass, early, as soon as possible is the best way to, have, to heal the patients. Anyway, if it's possible, you do, if the patient is stable, you don't need to operate the patient to do the lavage drainage because pigtail, just endoscopic, endoscopic internal drainage is enough to achieve the, the, the drainage. By the other side, if the patient is unstable, and the patients with peritonitis, you are obliged to do lavage drainage to make some drain. And then some days later, you have to send the patients to the endoscopies to do a complement of drainage by, by a pigtail to remove the external drain that you insert during surgery, avoid the chronic fistula. Again, not systematic surgery. Everybody, at, at the beginning of, of the presentation, I say, if you seal the defect, you have to drain the cavity by the other side, and radiological or surgical. In that way, in, you can drain completely the cavity inside without need of reduced surgery. Anyway, in stable patients, again, in stable patients. Outpatient setting, in my experience, I put, um, I insert um, a pigtail stent, the patient then can get at home with the nasophenic tube and for the control, come back to the hospital. Low morbidity, I will show you for sure we have a complication, but compared to the fully covered SAMs are very low. And in my experience, also it's very important. Also, the economic impact is the pigtail in France is 100, one, um, eight, 800 pig, um, euros compared to 800 the fully covered SAMs. And there are some uh, several studies that say at least you need a 2.7 SEMS for patients, so means 1,600, maybe 2,000 euro, when with pigtail, you insert a free pigtail, free for pigtail, and leave there, and then you can do, sometimes, for sure, you have to do endoscopy to remove, but also in the SEMS, but sometimes you don't find there anymore, so with the 300, 400, 400 euro, you solve the problem. In, uh, in obesity surgery in 2006, again, I published that about the, because a lot of surgeons say to me, if I have to, to offer the patients, there is a small fist, there is a small leak, a small fist, what we have to do. Again, if the patient is stable, there is a localized peritonitis below the diaphragm, perigastric, on the, on the left space, space of the, you can, if the patient is okay, you can send the patient to the endoscopy immediately to achieve endoscopic internal drainage. And this solves the problem. If the patient is unstable, there is a peritonitis, there is a um, general peritonitis with the tachycardia and some other scenes of, of uh, sepsis, several sepsis, you need, you are obliged to do lavage drainage and then to put some, some um, drainage near the defect and stop. Anyway, if you put stitch, it doesn't work. So just put some drain near the defect. And then 
how I do it, just is to show you exactly as, uh, how we do it. First of all, as soon as possible. Also in the next day, if a patient in, in a one day post-op, there is some leak because you can say the patient is not too doing well. You do CT scan and there is collection, a small, small collection near the stomach. You can do, if the patient is stable, you can do immediate endoscopic internal drainage. Second stuff, if the patient is unstable, and has been drained, so there are some drain near the staple line, you cannot do immediate endoscopic internal drainage. You need to wait some days, at least between the five and the seven days to do endoscopic internal drainage. But in that way, which is the interesting of, the, of endoscopic internal drainage, I put pigtail, the, the, the pseudo cavity is, is partially drained by your drain. It will be drained inside the stomach. But in that way, I give you the possibility to remove by next day, in, slowly, your external drain to avoid chronic fistula, to avoid the repitalization of the tract, of the project. Because if, you, if your drain will stay there a long time, you will have gastro, fist, gastro cutaneous fistula. So my, the aim of, of endoscopic internal drainage in a patient with drain is to, to, to do you the possibility to remove early, as soon as possible, your drain you, to favorize an internal drainage. And we publish also that in um, obesity surgery, and we show you these are the patients with the collection that was drained, my pigtail, and in that way, you have to remove that rapidly to avoid the gastrocutaneous fistula, chronic fistula, and that way the pigtail assure the endoscopic internal drainage. Again, for the first four weeks, I, in all patients, I insert a nasophilic tube, and then at one month, all the patients come back to the hospital to do endoscopy, um, endoscopy control. I remove the nasophilic tube, the pigtail is still there. I don't touch the pigtail, and all the patients start normal diet. And at three months, I control all the day, all the patients. Why at three months? Because the stent, the pigtail that I, I use in France, are they are um, implantable for 120 days. Because if not, you can also live more. And anyway, the pigtail are there to favorize granul granulation. In, in, in the moment, they call the, the, the pseudo, at the moment, they call the cavity, the pseudo cavity is completely closed, the, the big tail will go out, will migrate. Again, about the morbidity, for sure we have morbidity, we have some ulceration at the extremity, at the end of the big tail, we have migration in the spleen, we have several migration in the spleen, unfortunately, but do you know why? Because when there is ear, the collection, and you put the big tail, at the moment the, the, the collection is no more there, there is no more liquid, the pigtail, maybe this is a little stiff, this is anyways a little stiff. There was some migration in the spleen. All the migration that we have, we remove by endoscopy without any problem. But again, when I remove the pigtail migrating in the spleen, the surgeon was, was, was there because if something happens, we have to operate the patients immediately. And we have also that, you can see a vascular fistula this is the, the sleeve, the collection, and there was a vascular, a vascular fistula. We have some case, some case of, vas, of uh, vascular uh, fistula, and um, uh, all the patients were embolized successfully. And I will show you something. You can see here, we are the defect below the cardia. My pigtail, do you know what is there? I, I'm working there. The, 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 sorry, I'm working there below the cardia, this is the splenic artery. So you have to, anyway, you have to be careful when you insert the gut wire, when you insert something about that, because it's, it's easy to have some injury. In my experience, we have some bleeding in the, during the, the, the liver of the pig tail, but without any problem. But we have some bleeding for, uh, important bleeding, again, for the fistula with the vascular system that was embolized. But no patients died for that. And once I had also, this, this situation, I don't know if you can see, this is the hair in the portal system, and we have hariopathy. So, because they're working there, you can see this sleeve, right? this is a sleeve bypass, I don't remember, there was the, the, the drain, there was the fistula there, but there was, I have some leak in the portal system. So, what I suggest is to use, is imperative to use, high, uh, to use CO2. So if you do endoscopy, to put the pigtail, be careful, you have to hold the time, use CO2. If 
another if you know by the other side if sometimes we have a small cavity a pseudo cavity to still or stay there despite the big tail with the setum as galvao uh, described i perform setotomy and it works very very well i cut the setum and um, without any problem without any complication and this galvao reported uh, for the first and you can see here this uh, sorry this particular patient that the chronic fistula i do uh, personally i prefer to do with argon plasma to avoid the bleeding i prefer argon plasma not to cut with the with the needle knife or with other other devices that are are expensive i'm a poor guy so i use argon plasma i cut it i cut the the um, the, the septum with um, with the using forced coagulation and then just like for the um, zenker diverticula i put a clip at the base of the septum there i don't know if uh, in the video you can see yes i put a hemostatic clip do you know why it's not to prevent bleeding it's just to 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 favorize ischemia and the next time is more easy to cut because I don't do I don't cut immediately. I do one 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 two centimeter. Anyway, depends of the length of the setum. But anyway, I arrive on the first seance and the first uh, session to maximum two centimeter. And then I put uh, I put the clip. Next time you will find um, fibrosis. is more easy to cut. But these patients, just to show you that the technique is, works very well. Look, there was nothing more. Nothing more. Everything was completely revitalized. So it works very well. If at the end of endoscopic internal drainage, it persists in pseudo cavity with the septum to do uh, setotomy. And just uh, for the results, just to show you, this is a, um, um, a guy that worked with me, an intern, that, and a fellow that worked with me that published that. There was a, he did a um, classification of complication in on the um, radiological uh, vision. So this is the leak, just extra, extra leak, extra, extravasation, no extravasation, it's just a small leak without collection. With collection, this is a fistula a communication between the two revitalized uh, structure. And so you can see here the results, There's the leak without collection with the nasal feeding tube, just in the small pigtail, everything was healed. In the, with the collection, almost everything was healed. But in case of a fistula, there, are, there, there were a lot of, of, of failure. And this, sorry, this is nothing. This is my message today. If you have a chronic fistula, is a, you can find a pigtail, you can uh, say, to try pigtail, you can try septotomy that it can work. But if you have something already organized or very chronic, there is a failure of endoscopic treatment. The message is as soon as possible to, to do endoscopic treatment to try to solve the problem. So early management is associated with higher success rate. Characterization of a type of pathology. You have to know what you are speaking about. Is a leak with the collection, is a fistula with the bronchial tree or something, or with the colon, maybe. If there is a fistula with the colon, you can we you can put pigtail, but it doesn't work. It's, 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 the project is, is already is already established. And AD as a first plantation to treat to treat a leak following obesity is well tolerated, but you have to know never is in one shot. There are several endoscopic session. Anyway, you have to know first to pose the pigtail, one month later to check it, and three months later to remove it so if still were there, or maybe to do set totally. ID uh, um, endoscopic internal tension combined to septotomy in case of a clinical residual pseudo cavity or chronic cutaneous fistula, it works very well in expert hands. In my experience, enteral nutrition for the first four weeks in all patients, and again, the message is to work all together, close collaboration with the surgeon, with the radiologist, to see the picture, to discuss about the case, and also to discuss with the patients. I have some patients that start an endoscopic internal drainage, and anyway, they choose to be operated again because they, don't, they don't, doesn't want to come to the, to, to the endoscopy several times. So another important thing is the patients. We don't have to forget the patients. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gianfranco. Thank you very much. Uh, beautiful presentation. Uh, I'm sure that everybody is now familiar on how to deal with your 
uh, scary embryologic surgery complication. And uh, thank you for sharing all the uh, multiple cases and difficult cases that you have been treating uh, in your center in, uh, in Paris. I just want to mention that Gianfranco, just as Manuel in, in Brazil, has one of the largest series of um, of uh, endoscopic treatment of uh, complication from bariatric surgery. So before I or Manuel ask some question, there are a couple of questions from the audience. The first, Gianfranco, is could you please specify the size and the uh, diameter of pigtail that you use and maybe also the brand and the, and the uh, material because I know you have some preference there. Yes. There are several, uh, the, the pigtail that, uh, any, um, that we use are the pigtail in, um, I prefer in polyuretan because are more soft, but uh, if not, you have to, we have to use the pigtail in Teflon that are commercialized, but have, uh, that all the um, uh, brand that uh, do endoscopic material. About the size, you have to know that is a seven and 10 French in large. But you have to know if you use the, gas, the um, standard gastroscope, you have to use the seven French because are the, the only one that pass through the working channel that is less than 2.8 millimeter. So if in your operating room you have a gastroscope, standard gastroscope, you have to use the seven French. That I personally I prefer to I prefer I use more and more the same French because are very soft and they are, they are very, very, very low complication about the ulceration and something about that. But if you are able to have a duodenoscope or maybe a colonoscope, you are comfortable with the duodenoscope, you can use the 10 French that for sure you, you put a stent that is, it is larger, you have a better drainage. But this, the, the history of the drainage is not really because you have to know if you if you put see the, because the drainage is also between the pigtail. So if you put several pigtail, two, three, four pigtail, also the small one, the, the drainage will be also through the not only through the pigtail itself, but also through the several pigtail that are there. Because the IMO pigtail is not just to drain through the pigtail, it is to keep the defect open. Is to keep the defect open to have the optimal drainage, immediate optimal drainage. About the length of the pigtail depends of, of the size of the collection. When you inject contrast, if your size, the size of the collection is like that, three, four, five centimeters, you put five centimeters. If you have to go against maybe the abdominal wall, but the other side, in the proximity of the spleen, you have to put a 10 centimeter to have drainage. Another thing that you have to know that because you have to drain all the time, in the in the lower part of the cavity because if you put the pigtail and the pigtail is drained the, the the upper part in the upper part when the patient is when the patient is working there is just air you don't drain a liquid to drain the, to drain completely the cavity you have to drain all the time the the lower part because is the is the liquid is heavy so it will go also all the time in the in the in the, in the, the distal part of the of the cavity, and so you have to go. You have to arrive there with um, with pigtail. Gianfranco, thank you. We have another question. Um, Somebody is asking if you can put a pigtail if the patient uh, has been explored uh, surgically uh, for peritonitis. You have. I to. guess the question is, what's the right timing? Are you you the right time is five and seven five and seven days. I say all the time, at least five days. Do you know why? Because if you do immediately endoscopy, immediately, one day, two days later, after the surgical exploration, the, the pseudo cavity is not completely organized. So you, you, you will have a pneum peritoneum. So the patients will have a peritonitis, diffuse peritonitis. You, if the patient has been drained, you have to wait at least five days, between five and seven days, is what I published in the article. Manuel, any comment? Yep, uh, as usual. <laughs> My dear friend Gianfranco, how are you? How are you? Thank you. So, uh, to, uh. Yeah, bon dia. <laughs> so, uh, that, uh, you know what? It, these things change and we always change because we're in the favor of the patient. So, that's the question that we have to, we need to have uh, in the conversation we need to have at every single year. So, what have changed in your workflow and opinion about? Uh, about uh, the other methods, because when every time we, we write about uh, the treatment of the leak, especially for sleep gastrectomy, uh, 
there is at least seven methods that is described as being used. Uh, so I wanted you to, to put to us uh, how is your, your current, because it changed, uh, opinion about uh, the use of uh, stents, specifically bariatric stents. And uh, also uh, about the over the scope clip that a lot of people have some fetish that they're gonna work. And, uh, and the, the new kid on the block that I personally think that is an overkill for zip gastrectomy, that is the use of uh, EVAC or endoscopic vacuum. That is like uh, some countries like, uh, like for example, Germany, Germany. Most of the centers, they are using uh, that. So can, can you describe to us, because there's a multitude, and it may confuse our audience, there's a, such a multitude of endoscopic tools that we can use to treat the sleeve leaks. So uh, can, you, can you enlighten us of your, it's your current opinion about that? Okay, yes, for sure. And um, you are exactly right. I, I have to do, and uh, when I presented the defect, of this liver, when you do endoscopy, you, throw a you, you find a defect. You can, uh, I say that we can uh, seal or drain the defect. If you seal the defect, what we have now actually to seal, we can close with Ovesco, uh, you, you put Ovesco, but tell me something, if your patients, when, when you have uh, patients with leak after sleeve bypass, you do uh, lavage, uh, lavage uh, of the peritoneal cavity, you put uh, um, external drainage, if you put some stitch, it works. I think no. Everybody knows that it doesn't work. But tell me why seal of the defect by inside with the clip of Vesco could be work. If your stitch that are maybe are more more um, let's say more, uh, you have more, more stride doesn't work. It doesn't work. Do you know why? Because the age of the of the of the stomach of the of the, the wall the GI wall is already fibrotic. Is already inflammated and. In my experience, I didn't show because we don't have time. Or oh, at the beginning, when I start with the OVSCO, three days later, one month later, all the OVSCO was out. Because when you search the, 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 the defect to deliver the, to deliver the OVSCO, you have some hood. It's very, it's, it's, it's very rigid, it's very, to, to, it's very difficult to, to search, but also to close. And I published also that in, a, in a one study, when you do Perforation, GI perforation, and immediately to close with with Ovesco, it works very well. One hundred percent of case of such is because everything is soft is immediately. But if you if you, if the inflammatory cascade is already done, just one day later is already inflammated. You cannot close anymore. This is my experience, and it's not in, in a huge case of patients. I had some problem, and for that I don't use anymore. I don't believe at all in this kind of a clip in this situation. With about the SAMS, there are some cases that still I use SAMS. I show you when I am uh, some defect, when I have some defect in the mediastinum, in the mediastinum, when there is the lower esophagus with some problem in the thorax. In that case, still I use fully covered SAMS. And sometimes I use also sometimes fully covered SAMS coupled with. Uh, with, with the pigtail, when there is a very tight stenosis, a very long stenosis in patients that uh, there is a, a delay that of at least three weeks by surgery, by, by index surgery. Still, I used SAMS as complement of, uh, with, the, with endoscopic drainage to, have, um, to heal the problem. What about the vacuum system? I have to use something. I didn't use, but I believe a lot. I'm trying to have here in my clinic vacuum system. I'm, I'm uh, doing all the stuff to have. Do you know why? Vacuum system, if you think, is a sort of drainage. Is a continuous drainage of the collection. Is a continuous. Is a is a is a more for sure um, compared to big tail. Is more more fast. Is a is a continuous drainage. I believe a lot in the vac. But unfortunately, I don't have it, but I believe a lot. I think I open September to start with that. The only problem, Manuel, do you know what is? These, these obese patients are particular patients. So with the EVAC, you have the, 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 the tube that is going out through the nose, through the nose. Then the patients have to stay in the hospital for all the period with such pump uh, uh, all the time. So these particular patients sometimes are complicated to manage. For that, pigtail is 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 for more easy to give to to, to accept to the for the patient to the patients. But evac again, I believe a lot of it is a solution. There are some studies that appeared 
that are uh, about EVAC. The only problem is the length of treatment. Did you see there are sometimes the patients that stay a long time in the hospital and this is difficult to manage. And anyway, is another stuff you have to change. There's the, the, the sponge every three, four days. So every three, four days, general anesthesia, you have to, to, to do all the procedure every three, four days. But in, uh, I spoke one sometimes ago with, uh, with a guy from uh, Germany that is a huge experience and he had a very, very good results also for big cavity and they go very fast the healing. So uh, I, I, I will say something that will really surprise you, Juana, 100%. Gianfranco, I 100% agree with you. And as a perk... That's shocking. You. I'm my, I'm my, yeah, you see, shocking. And this as a perk of that, you yeah. see, I will offer you, uh, and you just connect, have to reach me, the Brazilian way to do EVAC. No sponges, just a nasogastric tube. You put a four by four gas goes. Uh -huh. You you pack that with uh, with plastic. You put inside that. Uh, you have to 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 change that every seven ten days. It's about to be published in US and it's about the same results. So okay, see, and Silvana, I'm I'm sorry to say that I I 100% agree with Gianfranco. Oh. <laughs> Yes, I was hoping for a little fight to end this second session uh, before thanking you, but I think it's, it's gone so smooth and uh, we will leave it with peace and love because <laughs> it is, uh, it is a, a big surprise. Uh, uh, for those of you who are listening, Manuel and Gianfranco used to have this fight of Sam's over pigtail. And I've seen that in the audience, somebody has asked question, would, which one do you prefer? Uh, but I think really it's a matter of, uh, of timing of, uh, of the fistula in the acute setting. Pretty much everything is, uh, is working when they become more chronic. I think that uh, uh, the general preference is to use either a pigtail or, uh, or endosponge and also location is important. Um, I'd like to thank you very much. I'd like to thank my two uh, speakers and friends, Gianfranco and Manuel. Um, I hope that you enjoy spending a couple of days and a couple of hours with us. I hope to do this again very soon. Uh, please send us uh, uh, feedback and comments. Uh, we'd love to have you uh, and uh, uh, good luck. Stay safe and see you very, very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Silvana. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ciao. Thank you.